This is a full video I made of an asymmetric built-up collared dress with a short cape sleeve and a pleated fitting skirt. If there's something you'd want to learn how to do, please do stick and stay and let's do it together. Please note one thing. If there is any style you'd want me to do a tutorial on, please don't forget to share with me in the comment section. Now, let's just get started. Before we'll be able to do this, we first would have to draft our basic bodice. This is our front pattern and this is our back pattern. In case you'd want to learn how we came by these, I'll put a link in the description box so you can check it out. If you also have any other means of drafting your basic bodice, you can use that and then we go ahead. I have transferred this basic bodice onto getting another basic bodice. This is cut on fold. We have also transferred all the darts onto the new pattern. Same with the back. We have transferred the dart onto this. There's supposed to be a cut here for closure, but then I have decided not to do it for now. We will do it at the appropriate time. Let's deal with the front and we'll come to the back. We first would have to fold this that onto the next one and this onto that. If the pattern you are using doesn't have a shoulder that, you can still go ahead and continue. Then we divide the shoulder into three and then we pick one. This shoulder length gives me four and a half. Divided by three would give me one and a half, meaning one and a half from the neck width towards this side. Since we are going to project the neck area upwards, we would first have to get another brown paper insert beneath tape it down and then we do the extension so this was the shoulder that already existed we would move about one and a half inch upwards depending on how high you want your neckline to rise Then we draw an arc that is connecting the shoulder to our new drawn line. We are going to draw a line from this side through the center front and onto the point we've just marked. We'll then go ahead and cut. Let me pause. Just as we, we did for this neckline, we'll do the same for this neckline as well. We are going to divide this into three and pick one, which gave us one and half. So we'll mark our one and half from the neck width here towards the shoulder. And with this, we will connect onto this point. We want it to touch the center front. We will then go ahead and do the cutting. I'm then going to join this bust point to where the shoulder that was supposed to end and I'll do same for this side
This is what we get after we have cut all the pieces. Let's look at how to modify the back pattern. We are going to modify the right shoulder. And so now I'll align the side of the front which has the lifting on the shoulder. I'll put it face down so that the two armholes meet. And we'll shape this side just as we are done for the front. We're moving from the center back line downwards by two inches. We connect this point to this into the armhole of the left part. Now we want to connect this also to that. I want to connect these dart lines to touch the top here so that we get it in different patterns as we are done for the front. I'll go ahead and cut the pieces. This is going to be the back. I've marked the center back line because that is where we'll be fixing our zipper. And so during the cutting, we're going to cut these into two. We'll then get 6A and then 6B. We'll use this and that to cut our fabric of the same color. And we'll use this to cut the contrast one. We have used our patterns to cut the fabric, both the fashion fabric and the interface with the lining. And so I have fused the interface to the linings for all of them, except these two. But then with these two, I've cut the fashion fabric and the lining. What you're going to do right now would be to join these pieces. We'll first join the fashion fabrics and then we we'll join the lining. That's what you are doing for both the front and the back patterns. All the various pieces which have been cut through, because we are going to join them, we have to add seam allowances to them so that when we stitch them together, our measurement won't fall short. After sewing the pieces together, this is what we get, very structured and nice. We have done the same for the fashion fabric itself. The same thing applies to the back lining and the back fashion fabric. The two have all been sewn together. What you are going to do would be to finish the neckline. Bear in mind, this is the neckline and this is the armhole side. And this is the part that connects to the bodice itself. And so we're going to finish this side and then we turn it to the good side. We'll be doing the same for, for this too. This is the front and this is the front neckline. We'll be finishing this part. Bear in mind this has been cut in two pieces. I use the same fabric as its lining. After we've gone to finish the neckline, we're going to pin this onto just the fashion fabric itself. And so we're going to run stitches on this. And we'll do the same for the back pattern as well. We are going to lift the two fashion fabrics. That is those ones 
with the extensions we did and place the two good sides together. We'll go ahead and stitch this. Then we'll repeat same for the lining. So this is it after stitching the shoulders together. And when we come to the lining, this is what we have as well. What you're going to do right now will be to stitch the two together. We're stitching the fashion fabric and the lining together. We are finishing the whole neckline. Bear in mind, we have sandwiched the other part into the two. We're going to do the same for the back pattern, that is the left side of the back pattern as well. We'll also put these two together and then we'll finish this line. That is the rest of the neckline. This is our neckline, as you can see. In case you have not subscribed to our channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Also, share with us your comments. We are now going to join the other shoulder. And so this is it. You can see there was a little mistake here. During the drafting, when I was supposed to join the shoulder all the way to the neckline, I forgot to divide the shoulder length into three and then pick one as we are done for the front pattern. That is why putting the two front and back shoulders together, you see that the back is a little longer than that of the front. And so all you do is that you correct it and then make the two same. Then we run stitches on the edge. Next, we're going to run overlock stitches on all the unfinished edges. And so this is our basic slip looper. In case you don't learn how we drafted this, I'll put a link in the description box which you can check out. And so we're going to modify this into getting our short cape with a puff. This is what we are doing. We're making sure that we leave a bit of allowance. We are leaving three inches at the top here. And then we want to get a total of about 10 inches because as I said, it's a short one. We're going to trace this, elongate it till we get to the top here. When it comes to the down here, we are elongating it till we get to 14. So as it starts now, because it's going to be a cape sleeve, it means we wouldn't use the inseam that much and so we're going to cut off at the inseam area. And so we mark 3 inches from this part all the way to where we want. I'm marking 8 inches at this part and then I'll join from the 8 inches all the way to where we marked the 3 inches. Since I have extended this downwards, it means we should have a curve and so I'm marking 1 inch inward and then we curve it to meet this line. I would go ahead and cut this off. We'll go ahead and use this to cut our fashion fabric and our lining. After cutting our lining and our fashion fabric, we're going to sew them where we finish the edges 
And so we'll put the two together. I've created notches on both sides. This is where this is where the cup is supposed to end. And this will be the remaining part of the sleeve. And so I've created notches there. We put them good size together. And then run stitches from where I've created the notches to this part. It comes to the edge here and then it gets to where the other notch is. And repeat same for these two. After running these stitches, we're going to turn it inside out. But first, let me reduce the seam bulk at the edges here. I've actually decided to change this puff into a normal keep sleeve and so we're rather doing a short keep sleeve and not the puffed keep sleeve and so all that I'll be doing now would be to refine this and cut the excess off would we'll use this to also correct this sleeve whereas we cut off the puff repeat same for this other one and so this is what we have the three inches that we had in the puff sleeve is the same thing we'll be using and so the three inches taken off from the dress itself we measure from here all the way to this part and then we have uh, 16 inches we'll go ahead and then finish this edge running using an overlock stitch after that would come and insert it onto our dress and repeat same for the other side so with a skirt we're sewing a fitted skirt with pleats at the waistline and so this is what we have this is the this is the front pattern and that is the back pattern after the skirt itself is cut I have also cut another fabric this with a dimension of seven and a half for this and then four and a half for the small one both edges are unfinished and so i want to finish these two together what i'll do is that i'll sandwich this into these two so that i'll sew and turn it to the other side and so this is actually the good side I'll place it in here and put this on. I'll go ahead and sew this part of it. After sewing it like this, we'll turn it to the good side. We are going to fold our pleats, but this is what I want to do. I'll measure four inches at this side, at the top here, I would measure one inch, and that is what I'll start with. After the four inches and one inch, I would move here by four inches, two inches space, four inches, two inches space, and down here too, I'll do the same thing. Four inches, two inches space, four inches, two inches space. Because I'm going to fold these two together, I'll first make sure I stitch the edge here so that folding it doesn't become cumbersome. Then we fold the second four inches line onto the first. Then we leave the two inches in between. 
then we fold the next four inches onto this and we leave the two inches and so we repeat this till we are done and so after folding this we are going to place it on our front skirt We're leaving the seam allowance on the side. We trim off the edge. And so we'll go ahead and stitch the edge and this part as well so as to secure the pleat onto our skirt after we are done securing them we'll cut off the excess to prevent this from opening as and when the model walks around. We would also have to secure this part. That is where the pleats are. You just hold it like this. You open and then we stitch just a few inches back and forth. Then we leave it. Then we'll come for the next. We would also stitch a few inches back and forth and then we leave it so that we'll be able to secure the pleats without distorting it. After we are done securing it, we'll then place this on our top and put them together. So we're going to run stitches on the waistline. We'll do same for the back patterns as well. After fixing our top to the skirt, we're going to close the center back and then fix our zipper. And then we'll finish the various sides, that is the left and then the right seams. We'll finish them up as well. For the zipper, I'm taking 10 inches from the waist to the hip area. And I would also leave a slit at the center back of about 6 inches, plus a 2 inch hem allowance will give me 8 inches. So you know, we are taking just about four and a half inches. That's what we are sewing. 